What's up everyone, how you doing? In this video, I'll be reviewing the Commodore SX64. I like to refer to it as the Commodore Sex 64 because this is a sexy beast, let me tell you. Came out in 1984 by Commodore. And when it was released in 1984, it was the first colored portable computer. Now I use the term portable very loosely here. This, this is technically portable. It, it has, right here the stand actually comes up and it's a holder. And this thing weighs 23 pounds it's super heavy for those who don't go by pounds i believe it's 10.5 kilograms so when i say this thing is a beast this thing is a beast and not only does it act as a, a computer but you can use it as a weight machine it's super heavy because of that you can lift weights and get a good good workout for it uh but it is part of the commodore 64 line of computers commodore 64 is probably one of my favorite computers of all time it came out in 1982 hugely successful for commodore was really supported up until 1994. If you include all the games and the software that was released for the Commodore 64, there's over 10,000 different games and softwares and programs and all that good stuff. So even today, there's a big following for Commodore and a lot of loyal fan base for Commodore. It was huge in this North America, it was huge in, in Europe. Great computer and what was smart by, for Commodore is when they sold the Commodore 64, it retailed for 595 US dollars back in 1982. You could purchase, everything was all mode, right? You purchase the computer, you purchase the monitor, the printer, everything separate. So it was a really cost effective way of marketing computer opposed to the Apple was, everything was bundled. The, even the Atom, the Clico did the Atom and that was, came with a printer and everything was a lot more expensive when you buy it together opposed to separate. So Commodore was really smart. This, however, is not considered the first portable computer. And keep in mind, portable computer, this is before laptops, right? The laptops that we know today really didn't start hitting the market until the late 80s, early 90s. And so the Osborne one, is a lot of people consider, most people consider the first really mainstream portal computer. And that came out in 1981. So it came out three years before this. You're asking how much was the Commodore SX64? Retail, it came out, was released at 995 US dollars, which was actually about half of what the Osborne one retailed for. And the Osborne one also came out with a little monitor. There was two disk drives, floppy disk drives. This only has one. You can see where's that? Okay, you can see here there's a slot, and you can see there 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 is no two disk drive. They don't they didn't, this does not include a cassette drive, unfortunately, uh, and it does have a cartridge slot in the top, and the printer didn't come with a printer. You can hook up a printer, though. The earlier models of this, for some reason, the power wasn't enough to support both this and a printer. Now they quickly fixed that and they fixed the printer, so that wasn't the case later on, but that was a huge drawback on this thing. And because even though this was half the price of the Osborne One, and by the way, the Osborne One came with, uh, the, the monitor that it had was monochrome, it was green. Think of like the Game Boy-ish, a little bit more tinted green. And that sold fairly well, but this in terms of Commodore sales didn't really sell very well at all. It's, it's hard, there hasn't been any really official numbers released, but if you go by the serial number, it's well less than 100,000 of these were actually sold in the 80s. By 1986, this thing was discontinued. Now, interesting enough, 995 US dollars back in 1984 when this thing first came to market is actually with inflation, it's about 2,500 US dollars today. So it's equivalent to a really nice laptop that you'd purchase today. Having said this, this thing is built really well. It's very sturdy. The monitor, even though it's small in terms of monitors today, obviously portable monitors, you can really see things very clear, which is nice and it's very clear and it's crisp. And so I think, I, I feel like Commodore did a really good job building this, this computer and putting it together. The one thing that they made a mistake was after, quickly after they released this to the market, they announced that they were gonna release a Commodore DX version of the Commodore 64. So it was gonna be called Commodore DX 64. And the difference was instead of this empty space here that you have, they're gonna have a second floppy drive. And that unfortunately never came to the market, officially anyway, there's been some prototypes and I believe some employees who worked at Commodore back in the day have, they, they've been kind of leaked. Uh, there have been several found in Germany, a couple found in North America. Extremely rare to find those. And hobbyists, enthusiasts today have taken the Commodore SX64 with that empty slot and added other things. So they've added other disk drive, they've added a cassette drive, which didn't come with other mods and modifications. So it's pretty cool. I think it'd be funny to bring this to like a Starbucks, for example, and today and just carry it in a Starbucks and just use it and see what people's reactions would be. I think they look at you like you're crazy. Because again, 23 pounds, super heavy. There is no internal battery. So you have to plug this into a wall. So again, you use the term portable very loosely. 
You can technically carry this on a flight, I suppose. You can put it in the overhead storage or you can put it underneath the seat in front of you, but you wouldn't be able to use it <laughs> on the computer. You, you wouldn't be able to use it on the plane necessarily, right? There's been various models of the Commodore 64 release. There's been the Educator, which was really geared towards schools, which was also monochrome, uh, just green, basically. And that was to compete with Apple, because Apple did a really good job in the 80s. I grew up playing Apple II computers in my elementary school, for example. So Apple really dominated that market. But that was Commodore's answer to the Apple. And there's also a version that was released uh, only in Europe that didn't come out in North America, unfortunately. It was a game system, the Commodore game system. Basically, a consoleized version of the Commodore came with a joystick and it would play all the cartridges. When I was young, I was very naive. I used to think that these cartridges were actually Atari cartridges. Not the case. It's, it's really a great gaming machine. Literally thousands of great games for the Commodore, whether it's cartridges or the five and three quarter inch floppy disks. Yes, floppies, those were a thing. Uh, and uh, I miss floppies, believe it or not, even though they took a while, quite a while to load in, in some cases. There's also supposed to be a Commodore LCD that was supposed to release. It was actually more of a traditional laptop that was supposed to come out after this that Commodore had kind of announced. And again, that didn't come to fruition, unfortunately, as well. So this is really the only true portable Commodore 64 that you will find in the market. And it hasn't aged great, but I will say this, like I said before, it is very sturdy, built very well. This is also using Commodore Basic 2.0 as far as the, the main program goes. So without any further ado, let's take a closer look at the system itself. I'll show you some gameplay, of course. Let me know your thoughts of this. Do you have one of these? Do you have a Commodore 64? If so, please recommend some games in the chat here. I really appreciate recommendations. And without any further ado, let's take a closer look. Thanks. Okay, so here's what the front looks like. Um, and this is when it's closed. You can push these two buttons here and press down. This actually comes off. This is the keyboard. A lot of people actually prefer the keyboard uh, of the SX64 over the standard Commodore 64 keyboard. It does feel nice for being mid-80s. It does feel nice. So by 1986, this thing was unsupported by Commodore. So it only lasted a couple years in the market, which isn't very long considering the Commodore 64. You can see here, here's the five inch monitor. Right now I have Dig Dug. It's kind of glaring with the cameras causing that. We can. We can do some adjustments to make it more clear for the camera. We'll do that in a second. I have a floppy disk here. Right now I have Disney Manhorn Screamer. A really fun game. I played it quite a bit growing up on the Apple II computers, but, but it's also available on the Commodore 64. I'll we'll go ahead and close it out. Okay, um, now when, one thing is when you have the games plugged in and the games actually come in the top, I'm gonna turn this off real quick. Put the switch on the back. The games on the top, these are what the cartridges look like. And when you put in the game, they, they plug in the top here. You just turn it on and what, regardless if you have the floppy game in or program in, it's automatically gonna load the game cartridge here. Okay, so let's get to know. So we're gonna boot it on. Here's a little door here that shows you, there's some adjustments here on the panel here. There's some list of panels. You have volume, you have uh, contrast, uh, sub bright, brightness, color, reset tint, etc. So right now, let's see if we can adjust the image so it looks a little more clear. That way it's not so bright. That's a little better. And the volume, so we'll go ahead and plug it and the, the control port's in the back. So let me show you what the back looks like real quick. What the back looks like, you can see there, this is the two controller ports. There's a nine pin controller, it's similar to the Atari 2600. Other consoles and computers back in the 80s, pretty standard. There, There is a port to hook up your um, external monitor, so that's nice. I love the Commodore 64 monitor, it's awesome. You can see here is the serial number, it's GA1 and it starts with 34,000. The This is the generation one, this is the first batch. They made about, it go, the numbers go up to 49,000. GA2, they only made a thousand of those. Uh, the serial numbers go up to that. Uh, they didn't do a GA3 for some reason, but there's a GA4. It goes up to 17,000, GA5 goes up to 11,000, and GA6 go, serial number goes up to 7,000. So it kind of gives you an idea how many of these they actually made, even though the official numbers are not out there. Um, this is where power goes into. You have your fuse right here, uh, and then here are your serial ports here. So pretty standard stuff, and of course, your power switch right here in the top right corner. Now the nice thing is that this thing boots up super fast. Commerce 4 loads really fast, and uh, especially if you have the, the cartridge in there. So we're gonna hit F1, I'm gonna start it. Give you an, uh, it puts a lot of audio out too. Speakers are very clear. I'm not quite sure where the speakers are. I'm assuming they're on the side here, the, the system. Love Dig Dug, good port to the arcade. 
and let's check the volume out, see how loud it gets. Oh, that's a contrast of the brightness. Okay, let's do a... See, give you an idea. Super loud, yeah. So, it's got plenty loud, I'm not quite sure if you can hear it, but the, the monitor is, I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but the monitor does put out a slight static sound, which is kind of to be expected with these types of monitors. But love to dug, great port, I just want to show you this game. Let's show you Matterhorn Screamer now uh, on the floppy. Okay, here's what the floppy looks like. I miss these things, you know, of course, later on, uh, you know, Apple introduced the, the hard, hard disks, right? They got smaller, they got more more hard. Even Nintendo released the Nintendo 64 disk drive, which is cool. So we're gonna plug this in. One thing I also wanna point out, notice the white background. Uh, that's not typical with a Commodore 64. Most times when you load up a Commodore 64, it's got the blue prompt. They did white, so it's easier to see the words. But I'll say this, even in a five inch screen and monitor, it's actually pretty clear. You can actually see, I'm pretty impressed. So I really like the monitor. This thing is built really well. Uh, and you know, you could drop this thing, not that you'd want to, but it would probably, it's pretty sturdy. It'd probably hold up pretty, fairly well. Okay, so we're gonna load, we're gonna type in load. And we're gonna type in uh, kind of quotation mark. We're gonna do star, another quotation mark. And then it's, uh, we're also gonna type in comma. And this is a kind of standard low prompt for most most programs and games, comma and then one. And hit enter, searching for the floppy, it's loading. And it takes a couple minutes for it to load and find. Now, if you're running a program off a cassette tape, it could take upwards to 30 minutes for it to load off a cassette tape. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind. This is 80s technology. You can see Matterhorn Screamer. I'm not quite sure how well you can see it on the camera. It's kind of blurry, but let's see if we can adjust. One thing also interesting I found was even though I'm using a controller for both games, the controller ports are different, right? So the cartridge used one, cartridge used one I love this music here, watch. zippity doo -da. So you can't get, Disney can't do that anymore because uh, that, that, that song is from Song of the South, which is one of the most controversial movies that Disney's ever done, zippity doo -da. And it's, it's what Splash Mountain's based on, and that's why they're changing Splash Mountain. So. Look it up, you can kind of see the history behind it yourself, but this is obviously based on Matterhorn, Matterhorn Screamer, which is one of the first roller coasters, or thrill rides, as Disney calls it, at Disneyland itself. So it says, uh, published by uh, Tech Expressions. This is the Commodore 64 version. That dark line you're seeing scroll across slowly, that's the camera causing that. It's a difference with the frame rates between what the camera is capturing and what the frame rate is on the monitor. That doesn't happen in real life. You don't see that. Okay, so it says a bunch of words. E, um, e for easy, M for medium, D for difficult. We're going to do E. And K for, for keyboard or J for joystick. I'm going to go with joystick. And here you go. The goal is to collect all the flags and then basically collect all the flags and then um, keep climbing up the Matterhorn. but the controls are very, very difficult. It's like if you ever played Smurf Rescue, if you hit, don't jump at the right time, or if you jump incorrectly, you can, you can die. See? See, I pushed down and I died. <laughs> it's, I don't know how well you can hear it. And we'll adjust the color here. It's all black and white. Kind of appears bright on the camera, but there you go. A little better. Okay. 
I used to do so well at this game. Here you go. There you go. And got the flag. I'm going to down. Get this. I got to watch the, the mountain goat there. Okay. And I pushed up and I died. I don't quite understand how that works. But when I was a kid, I used to play this game all the time. I used to, I used to beat all that. I got to get up there. I'm going to push up and watch. I'm going to die because I'm not in the right. You got to right, get right in the right place. And I died. Doesn't make any sense. But this is how games were back then. They were just very challenging. So the replay value was high. They're kind of short games, but they make you play the game a lot. If I push down, I die. Now what happens if I just jump? Hit the jump button. Jump button doesn't get you high enough. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I appreciate you guys subscribing. Let me know what you guys think of the Commodore SX64. Uh, thanks for hitting the like button, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys soon. Take care, and of course, game on.